Welcome to Brisbane Airport in Australia. Starting point for today's Bonza Aussie adventure. All right, so I'm heading to Cairns today in Northern Queensland. Um, ordinarily, that's just a two hour non-stop flight from here in Brisbane. Um, but you know me, I don't like to do things the ordinary way. We like to make things a little bit more difficult. Um, and um, so yeah, today the flight that I'm taking has 12 stops and it's gonna take me more than 24 hours to get from here in Brisbane up to Cairns in Queensland. Um, so um, yeah, it's gonna be a long old day. And we're, oh, by the way, we're doing it all on a little turboprop plane as well. So um, I've got all my supplies ready for the day. Let's head down to the plane and take a flight out into the middle of the Aussie Outback. All right, so that is the little plane that is gonna take me all the way out into the middle of the Australian Outback. I'm gonna be on board that plane for nine hours today um, and then another five hours tomorrow as well. It's a flipping long day for such a tiny little plane, but I'm super, super excited because we're gonna be hopping across through all these tiny little towns out in the middle of nowhere. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a fun adventure. So um, let's go and get on board. Good morning, I'm good, how are you? Good morning, all passengers travelling on flight. FC 43 coming to Billboard. All you have now is Perfect, all good to go. Lovely, thank you. All right, then, here we go. Nine hours on a SAR 340 starts now. I headed to my seat and pretty soon the engines were fired up, ready to begin my epic Aussie Outback adventure. Caution, a smoke detector has been fitted in the toilet. An adult life jackets are carried on board, which I will distribute if required. A survival kit located in the cargo compartment is also carried on board this flight. As we lifted off from Brisbane and said goodbye to the coast, I was full of excitement for what was in store over the next couple of days as we headed west to our first stop of Toowoomba. All right, then airborne leg one of eight for today as we head across Australia. The first leg today takes us to a town called Toowoomba. I'm sure they had a number one song back in the 90s with tub thumping. Um, but yeah, that's the first leg today across to Toowoomba. So this flight is known as the Rex Milk Run. Um, it basically is a stopping service that goes all the way into the centre of Australia. It's operated on behalf of the Queensland government who um, contract Rex to fly these three routes um, around Queensland. There's this one that takes you from Brisbane to Mount Isa, right in the um, western edge of um, Queensland. There's another one from Cairns to Mount Isa, which is the one that we'll be getting on tomorrow. And then they've got another one as well that goes over to Townsville, which is sort of halfway between Cairns and Brisbane. Um, and all of them stop at these little tiny towns all along the way um, to provide this essential service for people getting to and from um, the outback, really. Um, and as you'd expect, a lot of the people on the flight today are heading over there to work, so there's loads of like um, essential workers and things working out there in the middle of the outback, so um, which is pretty cool. And um, this is a flight that I've wanted to do for absolutely ages, I have to say. Um, it's been on my bucket list for a very long time to actually go and see close up the Australian outback right in the centre of Oz and um, we'll be doing it today, super excited. 
So Oomba is just a 25 minute flight inland from Brisbane, but already the landscape starts to look very different from the built up areas around Brisbane. We started our approach down into Toowoomba Airport for the first stop of the day. All electronic devices, including mobile phones, must remain in flight mode until you reach the terminal and must not be used whilst disembarking the aircraft. Alright then, first stop today, we're here at Toowoomba Airport. Um, originally when it was built, this one was going to be called Brisbane West. Then apparently they realised that it was 80 miles to the west of Brisbane and um, yeah, didn't go down too well, but never mind. First leg done, 11 to go. We're on board flight 5662, your Western 2 service. This flight is operated in partnership with Queensland State Government. My name is Margot and today your flight is under the command of Captain Douglas Francis and your first officer is Zachary Fisher. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your flight through to Charleville. So after a short stop in Toowoomba, it was time to get airborne for the next leg of today's adventure across to Charleville. At nearly 1 hour 20 minutes long, this was by far the longest leg on today's flight. Alright then, airborne from Toowoomba for the second flight of today's mammoth Saab 340 milk run across Australia. Um, this leg takes us to Charleville, which is about an hour and 40 minutes. That's by far the longest stretch on the entire trip. Um, so pretty much a long haul for this leg, so I'm going to have a bit of a bite to eat, I think, on this leg. Uh, I get some breakfast as um, we head across out back. So the only food you get served on this flight is um, a cookie, basically, and tea and coffee um, for the entire sort of nine hour flight. Um, I think you get like one cookie each leg, but it's still, I'm not going to survive on cookies today. So um, the breakfast today, I picked up some sushi over in the airport, nice bit of salmon to get me started for the day. As we got closer to Charleville, the ground was changing even more. The fields were much bigger than they were when we left Toowoomba and it was a lot more brown. with your seatbelt firmly fastened until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the captain has switched off the fastened seatbelt sign. I'll see you in a few Thank minutes. Thank you, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> the stop at Charleville gave me a chance to get off the plane and stretch my legs a bit before we continued on the rest of today's adventure. Welcome to Charleville, Queensland. Um, population about 3,000, I believe. It's a small town out here that's like quite away inland now from Brisbane. Um, and we've come off the plane here because they're going to be refueling it. Uh, chance to stretch your legs and it to the bathroom and things before we get on for the next few flights um, out across the outback. But yeah, quite a small little airport here, although it's, I suppose it's like an international airport compared to some of the ones we're going to be seeing a little later on in the trip. So I can't wait to see those. So yeah. Uh, run up to the bathroom, I think, and then we'll head back out to the plane and get on our way for the rest of the adventure. Eventually, it was time to get back on board the plane and continue on the next leg of today's journey. Hello again. Hello, it's the same seat. Same seat, 9A, yeah, yeah, thank you. This flight is operated in partnership with the Queensland State Government. My name is Margot and today your flight is under the command of Captain Douglas Francis and your first officer is Zachary Bishop. 
caution, a smoke detector has been fitted in the toilet. As we took off from Charleville, we turned to the west to begin the next leg of our adventure, to the town of Quilpie. By now the scenery was just how I imagined the Australian outback, nothing but orange desert as far as the eye could see. Alright then airborne, once again from Charleville now, heading across on the 30 minute hop to the next hop of Quilpie, um, which is a, I think an even tinier town than Charleville, about 600 population there. Just nothing there out the window, just apart from the red desert and trees and dirt tracks. And um, it's getting more and more desolate the more we're flying through, but having a fantastic time, absolutely loving this so far um, on the Rex Saab 340. Um, having an amazing trip. Pretty soon, and with still no sign of life out of the window, we started our approach over the desert into Quilpie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quilpie. Please remain seated with your seatbelt firmly fastened until the aircraft has come to a complete stop. The toilet must not be used during the turnaround. to Quilpie population about 600 um, and this stop here they it's such a brief stop they actually keep the um, right engine running while we just swap passengers over here um, in the middle of nowhere off from Quilpie and headed further out into the desert. Our next flight was the 30 minute hop to Windora. Alright, a very quick turnaround there in Quilpie and airborne again now. Alright then, snack time. Seeing as we're flying into the outback, what else to eat? Got some fresh kangaroo as we fly over herds of kangaroo. Ooh. absolutely delicious. Feels slightly bad for the kangaroos down there on the ground. Oh, and me. I'm eating your mum. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Uh, Alright, time for a Saab 340 Lou Review. I've never done a Saab 340 Lou Review. Um, and it's um, a little bit tight, a bit of a squeeze, you can't really dance around in here. Um, not much room for much other than getting in and out, really, so I'll be quick. Um, but what we've got here, a few bits and bobs dotted around. Can I squeeze around? Hang on. God. Mirror, to make it look much bigger than it is. Um, some bits and bobs in there. And I push to flush. And, and that, that's about it. Um, yeah, it's right next to the cockpit. I've got a friend, by the way, who um, used to fly Saab 340s for an airline in the States, and he was telling me a story about it's right behind the first officer seat, this toilet, and if someone's on board and has had a particularly heavy breakfast, um, then um, yes, the aroma does um, seep through into the flight deck next door. So um, yeah, not nice. So um, it's just not number ones only, I think, um, on the Saab 340, um, so yes, I'm going to finish off in here and then go and get some chiropractic work done, I think. 
That was the Noel Phillips Lou Review. Ah, what a stinker. We continued into the desert, seemingly getting further and further away from civilization. Then, out of nowhere, a surprise. The red desert suddenly gave way to lush green vegetation as we approached the vast Copper Creek floodplain. At almost 700 square miles, it's roughly the size of Worcestershire. Once again an engine was left running while a few passengers disembarked before we got on our way for the next hop to the town of Birdsville. All right then, Windora, Queensland, population 115 people here. It's starting to feel proper remote now. It's another very short stop here um, with the engine running on the right hand side just while they um, swap a few passengers um, and then we'll be on our way. Tell them how remote it is. It's, we're actually here and there's these big like, satellite solar farm things there that we saw when we landed. That's so cool. You can tell you're out in the middle of the desert when you see that. So yeah, very short stop here and then heading over to Birdsville. The door through which you entered and the exit. We continued pressing on further west as once again the ground turned orange and we crossed yet more of the vast Australian outback. Alright so if you're curious what the snack service is like on the Rex Milk Run, here's what you get. You get a choice of cookies or something savoury and I've gone for both today, they're like chocolate chip cookie bite things, they're quite tasty, quite nice um, and that's pretty much all you get so you really do have to get your food before you get on the plane or you can get it at one of the cafes along the route as well which we stop at. Um, they say usually the um, aircraft has a bit of an extended break where we've just took off from in Windora, um, which is quite a tiny little airfield. It has a bit of a break there, uh, but apparently Birdsville has got a much better um, like cafe and there's like a little bakery and stuff there that the crew, apparently all the rex crews love visiting there. So um, they've decided that we'll have the long break in <laughs> Birdsville so that um, they get to go to the bakery and um, we get to go there as well. So that's what we're going to do. So we're heading to Birdsville. Now, we've got about an hour on the ground when we get over there, so that's going to be fun to explore that little tiny town. Population there, only 115 people, um, I think, uh, something like that anyway. Very tiny town, just like Windora, but apparently they've got a good bakery, so all is good. You can see in here, at sort of whatever altitude we're at, flying over the Australian outback. Isn't this just absolutely incredible? The fact that down there, there's literally nothing as far as the eye can see in any direction there is no civilization whatsoever and we're just here flying casually over the top of it I mean I woke up this morning and had breakfast in Brisbane and now a few hours later we're here in this absolute wilderness with nothing at all just absolutely incredible such a cool experience if you ever come to Australia and you've got a couple of days on your hands consider doing something like this is absolutely amazing you just get a view of it that you never even can contemplate getting from sort of 35,000 feet up on a commercial plane you're sort of getting deep down and dirty with it and touching down in all these little places in the middle of nowhere what an absolutely amazing experience I'm having here I'm a lord now. I'm Lord Noel Phillips. Well, you've been a lord for a long time, mate, but not that. Not, 
Not that kind of lord, no. Thanks to established titles, I am now the proud owner of a plot of land in Scotland that makes me a lord. So now you can refer to me, please, as my lord, Lord Noel Phillips. Right, well, can you move? Because, like, I need to come in. Actually, it should be, can you move, my lord? Right, can you move or I'm going to knee in the nuts? Okay, I'm moving. Thank you. Established titles use an ancient Scottish law that allows anybody who owns land in Scotland to use the title of a lord. What this means is, is that you can buy a plot of land in Scotland with your name on it and become a lord of your very own, a legit one at that. You can use it on all your public documents and everything like that as well. You get your own dedicated plot of land in Edelston, Scotland that you can visit any time you like and what's more, they'll plant a tree for every single plot of land that they sell. It's a fun and novel way to help preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts and they also work with charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. The first 200 people who purchase a title pack using my link will effectively be right next to my plot. So if enough of us get together, we can build our own little Noel Phillips kingdom. Established Titles is running a massive Black Friday sale. So you get 10% off your title pack when you use promo code Noel at establishedtitles.com slash Noel. That's establishedtitles.com slash Noel. And you too can be a lord just like me. So you said about 2.30, yeah? Uh, yeah, so if you're in the terminal by about quarter past two. No worries, thank you. Yeah, we won't leave without you. That sounds good, thank you very much. <laughs> See, See you in a bit, enjoy your break. <laughs> All right then, welcome to Birdsville in Queensland. This is a um, population of about 140 people. Um, and this is the one of two flights a week that comes in here to Birdsville. Um, there's an ambulance here with paramedics and flying doctors have just gone on a flight. We've got about an hour now here in Birdsville. They've said we can take a wander into town and apparently there's a pub um, and a bakery and um, that's about it. So I'm just going to take a wander into the town of Birdsville and see what is here. How cool is this? <laughs> Inside and see if we can get a 4x. So we've made it to a pub in Birdsville, um, and I found out actually while I was on the flight today that Zach here, who's you're one of my patrons, aren't you? And <laughs> he joined literally like last week yeah. um, on my Patreon. Who just happens to be taking the exact same flight, which was not planned at all, was it? So yeah, it was just sort of randomly, total coincidence. So uh, we've come for a pint in the um, proper Outback pub, and they haven't got any Castle Main Forex, but um, this will do. This will be the next best thing, eh? So uh, yeah, cheers. So here's a little story for you. Back in 2006, Rach and I went over to New Zealand for the first time ever. Uh, first time ever in the Southern Hemisphere, really. Um, and we flew on Cathay Pacific, and on the way out, it was pitch black. We didn't get to see Australia at all. On the way back, it was the middle of the day, and um, from the window seat of this Cathay A340, we flew in over Australia on the way back to Hong Kong, and we flew in over Brisbane, across Queensland, and came right out across the Australian desert here. Um, 
um, and it was an amazing experience. I remember looking out and seeing nothing but orange desert for like miles around. Then in the middle of nowhere, I spotted a tiny little town with a runway that seemed to be bigger than the town itself um, in terms of how long it was. And I took a photo of that town and I thought, I want to go, I wonder what was there? It was just a mystical little town in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Um, and I took a picture of it and back in those days there was no flight radar or anything like that um, to be able to figure out where this town was. And I effectively managed to trace the route we would have taken using Google Maps and eventually found a town that kind of looked a little bit like um, the photo I'd taken. Um, and I discovered this town's name and I was like, okay, what's there? What is this mysterious little town in the middle of the Australian outback? Um, that town's name was um, Birdsville. Um, and this is Birdsville. <laughs> Funnily enough, like in a million years, I would never have expected that just a few years later, after taking that picture from right up there, that um, I'd actually be walking the streets of Birdsville one day, having flown into that tiny little airport and seen exactly what is a, that tiny little outback town. And uh, <laughs> isn't that incredible? I've only just realised it today when I've looked at the map and I've seen actually the picture of Birdsville and the photo that I took back then. Um, just absolutely incredible. So yeah, here we go. This is what Birdsville looks like. A little tiny outback town. Right, I've had a pint over at the pub that's here. That's about all there is. Here is a pub and a bakery. Um, and now we're going to head back across to the airport and get on board. That Saab 340 right just there that's going to take us the rest of the way for today to Mount Isa. <sighs> Let's go and get on board. Thank you. Right, you I do, yes, if you can Love see it. it. Yes, I can. Thank yep, you very there much. We go. Good Cheers. Go. Thank Enjoy you. Over. Sick of the sight of me, Sue. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there we go. We found the pub. That was far more oh, exciting yeah. than the bakery, so we did all right. Closed, so. I found out. <laughs> oh, was it? Monday oh, okay. closed. Oh no, yeah. well, then you should have come to the pub. I know. Much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> all good, just the same Sue. Thank you. which may be located behind you also identify an alternative exit. saying goodbye to Birdsville. Birdsville, you shall remain a mystery to me no more. Um, what an incredible little town that was. Um, we're heading now on the next leg up to Bedouri, which is an even smaller town than Birdsville. It's got 112 people, I think, there's a population of um, Bedouri. And that's about a 25 minute ride up across more desert. So um, yeah, let's go see what's at that airport. So I've just had a quick chat with the flight attendant. Normally after Beduri, there's a stop in Bulia uh, between Beduri and Mount Isa. Um, and they don't have any passengers getting on or off in um, Bulia today, but they're not sure if they've got any freight. If there's no freight to come on or go off, then we'll be going straight from um, Beduri to Mount Isa rather than having the stop on the way. But if they've got to get up some freight or something from Beduri, um, sorry, from Boulia, all the bees. Um, if they've got to pick up some freight in Boulia, then um, we'll have to stop there and pick that up. But um, yeah, that's it. A couple more legs today before we get into Mount Isa. All right then, Baduri, population 122 people, um, and another hot stop um, where they're going to keep the engine running. 
on the right-hand side um, while they get, let the passengers get off. Um, not entirely sure if we're going to be going to Boulia, which is normally the next stop. Um, they're not sure if there's any cargo yet um, to pick up in Boulia. If there is, we'll stop there, but there's no passengers, so if there's no cargo, then there's no point stopping. We'll just continue straight through to Mount Isa. So um, we'll find out in a few minutes. So we are stopping in Boulia, it seems. It's about 25 minutes up the road, um, across a little bit more desert, and then we'll be stopping in Boulia. And then that's the last stop before we get to Mount Isa for our overnight stop tonight. So, um, yeah, <sighs> not long on today's run. We've still got another, oh, another four flights tomorrow, though, to do. So, um, yeah, it's a nice plane. It's a really fun experience, don't get me wrong. I I'm, I'm getting a bit of a numb bum now, I have to say. These Saab 340s are not made for nine hour flights. <laughs> Please remain seated with your seatbelts firmly fastened. All right, welcome to Boulia, population 301. It's positively a metropolis compared to the last places. Um, home to 301 people and also home to some mysterious lights apparently that appear in the sky at night. Um, it's getting a bit weird now, isn't it, as we get more and more out into the outback. But um, yeah, this is our last stop. They're just doing a fuel stop, so they're keeping the engine running. Uh, sorry, not a fuel stop, they're doing a cargo stop. Um, I think they're loading cargo on, we'll see in a few minutes. Um, keeping the engine running, and then we'll be moving on to the last stop of the day for today, up to Mount Isa. So the last leg of the day for today, up to Mount Isa. Um, that's our overnight stop tonight. And then we carry on in the morning for more Saab 340 outback hopping adventures as we continue on our journey. But for tonight, I've about had enough of the Saab for one day. <laughs> very, very kindly they um, radio ahead to Mount Isa as well to um, book taxis for us as well. So there'll be a taxi waiting for us when we get to um, Mount Isa, which is pretty cool, especially considering me and Zach um, are both staying in the same hotel, so um, that um, has worked quite nice. So, um, yes, we've got about another half an hour or so um, on this last hop today. Come on, Nolly, we can do it. One more hop today and then bed for tonight and um, do it all again tomorrow. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Enjoy your layover where you're staying tonight in town. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Enjoy the golf run. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it should be fun. good. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Have Thanks a, good a lot. Trip. Yeah, have a good trip back. See you. Later. See you.
Thanks very much. Thank you. Hey, no. Yeah, how are you doing? All right. <laughs> nice to meet you. See ya. Good to meet you. I didn't think I had um, viewers out here, but... <laughs> oh, mate. We pop up everywhere, Jono. Jono, finally. Nice yeah, to meet you, mate. Yeah, good, good to meet, meet you. you. How was it? Uh, good. good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, long day, but yeah, good. Yeah, nice. I've done that a couple of times. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice one, yeah. I was just saying to my friend here, it's just like you go, even out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. People all say hello. I pop, I pop up everywhere, mate. It's a pair of the internet. Cheers, Jono. Nice to meet you, mate. See you later. Yeah, we can just share the cost then if you like. It makes it a bit oh. cheaper, doesn't it? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you got a booking for? Uh, I've got the Rex Crew. Rex Crew, we have one through people. That'll be us. That'll be us. Yeah. yeah. There is three crew. Oh, yeah. 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 They'll have their own transport with them. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Um, so yeah, let's head inside and get some food. Oh, nice truck. <gasps> Silverado. So yes, I'm as surprised as you that there is an Ibis in Mount Isa. Um, and it's, it's the only chain hotel that's here. Um, but um, yeah, and it's not a bad Ibis either, if you excuse my crap all over the bed. Um, it's a reasonable sort of room, it's quite a decent size. It's basically like a Premier Inn. Um, it'll do for the night, we've got a little bathroom situation going on there and um, that's pretty much it really, nice big telly. Um, so yeah, let's go downstairs, get something to eat. And then I'm going to come and chill until, let's get some sleep hopefully, before my next flight and we continue on out of Mount Isa on the milk run. Right, so on the way into the hotel, we asked the taxi driver what there was to do in Mount Isa and where there was to go. And his response was, the bugger all mate, um, which didn't exactly fill us with confidence. It's a KFC and a McDonald's, but to sit down, apparently it's only one place. Um, and he said, oh, it, it, it's acceptable, but it might be shut. Well, we've, we've made it in and it's not shut and um, it's an Italian. And um, look at that. How nice does that look? Lamb or something, I think it's lamb. So um, yeah. I shall um, be giving it a go. Chastised by work colleague, or ex work, because she's now gone. And mm. That is amazing. Wow. So if you come to Mount Isa, come to the Giuseppe's Canteen. <laughs> Alright, then back in my room. Gonna get a bit of rest now, try and get some sleep because tomorrow we're doing it all over again and we've got another four flights again tomorrow with Rex on the Saab 340 on the next milk run that's gonna take us back across to the East Coast eventually. So um, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. All right, day two, good morning from Mount Isa. And um, yeah, another full day of flying lies ahead today as we take the second half of our epic Outback Milk Run flight all the way across to um, Cairns today. So um, yeah, let's head across to the airport and get on board today's ride. All right, the at Mount Isa Airport, and I'm going to say goodbye to Bernie and Zach now. So um, you're heading off. Where are you headed to? Yeah, Clon Curry, and then on to Townsville. Cool, on the Quanta no. Stash Eight, was yeah. it? Yeah, fantastic. Hope you guys have a good flight. Thanks you for too. sharing the nightlife of Mount Isa with me. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, I'm going to head inside and get across because we've got another five hours today on the Rex Saab 340. You're escaping that, you see? <laughs> Dash, you've had enough of that now. <laughs> right, let's head inside. So here we were then, day two of Saab 340 Adventures as we took our first flight north out of Mount Isa, heading towards the north coast of Australia. Hi, good morning, how you doing? Alright then, time to get comfortable for the um, five hour leg over two cairns with three stops on the way I think. So um, yeah, let's get going. and its beautiful lead mine um, as we head now on the 45 minute first hop of today over to a place called Dumaji which is another tiny little town so um, yeah I love this flight it's such a fun experience flying across the outback absolutely loving it um, although um, I'm kind of looking forward to getting into Cairns later on today because it seems like I've spent nothing um, but the last 24 hours on Saab 340s. <laughs> but never mind, just five more hours and we'll be down in Cairns. Alright, so the routine today then pretty much the same as yesterday, just with different airports. Um, it's 
four flights, three stops at tiny little towns on the way, um, Doomagee, Mornington Island and Normanton are the three um, airports that we go to today um, across the north of Queensland. Um, same service on board as well, so we get on each leg we get a bottle of water, tea or coffee and sweet or savoury snacks and we've got different, what's different today is we've got different cookies. Yesterday we only had chocolate chip cookies or it was like normal cookies but with like chocolate chips in them. Yeah, chocolate chip cookies. That's a chocolate chip cookie, isn't it? I'm confused. This, is, this jet lag is killing me. Um, anyway, these are salted caramel white chocolate cookies instead. So, mixing things up a little bit there, Rexar, with today's snack service. Let's try one of them. Very nice they are too. Dumaji. Um, they were letting us get off the plane here so we can actually get off and have a wander around, uh, which is a bit different to yesterday. So I thought I'd just hop outside and see what's here. Not a great deal, but um, it's nice to stretch your legs a bit and use a proper toilet. So um, yeah, a few minutes on the ground here in Dumaji, and then we continue on north into the Gulf of Carpentaria to Mornington Island, which is the next stop. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get back on board the plane. Across the coast of Mornington Island, I wasn't really sure what to expect. As it turns out, Mornington is a lush tropical island, home to over a thousand people. is located in the town of Kununa, the largest town on the island. The island has a rich indigenous culture having been occupied by the traditional owners of the land, the Lardil, for thousands of years. Others joining us for this leg of the flight to Normanton were the students of an indigenous school on the island flying to Normanton on an exchange visit. Hello. 
Right, so airborne from Mornington Island up here in the Gulf of Carpenter area. What an absolutely incredible experience this is. Um, and the, it just absolutely amazes me the sheer variety of um, communities that this um, essential air service effectively operated by Rex actually covers. I mean, we've seen everything from tiny little outback towns with 100 people to small communities out in the forest, out in the bush in the north of Queensland to um, a tropical island here, um, home to indigenous people over the, on the um, islands here, on Mornington Island. Um, and this service is just as essential for them as it is for everybody else that um, we've flown into today. Um, because these people use it as a their means of connecting with the cities on the mainland of Australia from out here in the bush. So, um, yeah. It's just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, so yeah, we're airborne then from Mornington. The next stop is a place called Normanton, um, which is back on the mainland of Australia. Um, so that's our next stop today, and hopefully we get to go and have a little explore around there as well. Welcome to Normanton. Please remain seated with your seatbelts firmly fastened. We'll see you in a few minutes. See you, <laughs> you. See you in a few. <laughs> Hi, how are you? All right then, welcome to Normanton here. Um, back on the mainland of um, Queensland, um, the last stop that we've got on today's flight actually. Um, and again, very, very different once more to everywhere else we've been today. This is sort of half bush, half sort of um, like river delta, sort of savannah sort of vibe. It's a bit sort of, um, yeah, very different. Every, it's amazed me actually on this trip, all through all these little airports, how, how I'd expected it all to be very, very similar and how in actual reality, it ended up being very different on every single one. Even the tiny little bush strips out in the middle of the outback um, were very different from one another. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely incredible. The variety, the sheer variety of communities that Rex service, services with these flies is just amazing. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back inside in a minute because it's flipping hot out here and I'm gonna burn my bow dead. Um, so um, we're gonna go and head back through in a minute, get back on board the Saab for the last leg today across two cairns. Our departure from Normanton was delayed slightly thanks to the flying doctors arriving to take a patient to a hospital some distance away. Seeing the remoteness of these tiny towns really shows just how important of a role aviation plays in these remote communities. Last one. Last one. Yeah. <laughs> hours 
on a Saab 340 and visiting some of the tiniest, most remote communities in the world. Um, just absolutely incredible. And this is, you know, this will take the biscuit every time. Um, and I've had an amazing time. It's been absolutely incredible flying with Rex and seeing everything that they do and um, seeing the sorts of people who use these flights and as an essential means of getting around, really. It's absolutely incredible. And that's the thing. I truly feel that you can only experience travel for real when you get out there and take these little flights to places that you've never heard of and see just what's there. Taking these flights across Australia has really proven to me just how unique all these communities can be, despite just looking like a huge expanse of red nothingness from 38,000 feet. Because somewhere down there in that red nothingness are real people, living real lives in real communities, and seeing those tiny communities at ground level is one of the things I love most about travel. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cairns. On behalf of the captain, men, captain and your crew, we would like to thank you for travelling with Rex today, and we look forward to your company when next you choose to fly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Try Indonesia. Have fun. Yeah, I'll try it. Well, I'm heading home, so I'm through Indonesia. So, oh, um, so where's the UK? Thanks very much. See you later. Thank you. Too. Thank you. As always, a massive okay. thank you to my patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live Zoom calls with me, and much, much more. So welcome to Cairns. Um, I've had an absolutely amazing time hopping around Queensland on board the Rex Saab 340 through all those tiny little communities. I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.